The air in our apartment crackled with tension as I confronted Declan about his growing indifference. Enough was enough. I was done being invisible in my own home. We need to talk, I said, my voice tight with restrained anger. Deck glanced up from his phone, arching an eyebrow in mild annoyance. What is it now, Avery? He sighed, the disinterest in his tone like a slap in the face. I took a deep breath, steeling myself. This can't go on. You're never here. You don't contribute anything to our household, and I feel like I'm living with a stranger. Declan rolled his eyes. Here we go again with the dramatics. I work hard to provide for us. Isn't that enough? Enough? I repeated, my voice rising. You're hardly ever home, Declan. When was the last time you cooked a meal or did the laundry? I feel like I'm your maid, not your wife. He scoffed. I bring home the paycheck. Isn't that what matters? You need to learn to be more self-sufficient. The words hit me like a sucker punch. Self-sufficient? I echoed, my hands trembling with barely suppressed rage. So you're saying I should just manage without you? Declan leaned back, a cruel smirk playing on his lips. If the shoe fits, wear it. I've had enough of your constant nagging. Maybe it's time you stepped up and proved you can handle things on your own. I stared at him, my mind reeling. This was not the man I had married the one who had once doted on me, who had made me feel cherished and protected. Now he sat before me, distant and contemptuous, challenging me to survive without him. Fine, I spat, my jaw set with determination. If that's how you feel, then I'll show you just how capable I am. Don't expect me to come crawling back, Declan. From now on, you're on your own. With that, I turned on my heel and stormed out, slamming the door behind me. Tears of fury and hurt stung my eyes but I refused to let them fall. Declan had thrown down the gauntlet, and I was going to prove him wrong, no matter what it took. As I walked the familiar streets, my mind raced. I had always been the more practical one in our relationship, the one who kept our lives organized and running smoothly. But Declan had always been the breadwinner, the one who provided the financial security that allowed me to focus on our home. Now, with that security suddenly yanked away, I felt a surge of uncertainty. Could I really manage on my own? The challenge Declan had issued echoed in my mind, taunting me. I clenched my fists, determination hardening within me. I would show him. I would show them all. Declan had underestimated me, and I was about to prove him wrong in the most spectacular way. As I reached my destination, a familiar face appeared, and I felt a wave of relief. Marissa, my closest friend, greeted me with a concerned look. Avery, what happened? she asked, her brow furrowing. You look like you're about to murder someone. I quickly recounted the confrontation with Declan, my voice shaking with emotion. Marissa's eyes widened, and she pulled me into a tight hug. That bastard, she hissed, her own anger palpable. How dare he treat you that way? I nodded, feeling a surge of gratitude for her unwavering support. I'm done, Marissa. I'm done being undervalued and overlooked in my own home. Declan wants me to be self-sufficient. Well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Marissa pulled back, her gaze searching my face. What are you planning, Avery? I squared my shoulders, a newfound determination burning in my chest. I'm going to show Declan exactly what I'm capable of, and when I'm done, he's going to regret the day he ever doubted me. The next few days were a blur as I tried to make sense of what had happened. Declan's words still rang in my ears his challenge to prove my self-sufficiency echoing through my mind. But I refused to let the uncertainty I felt show. If Declan wanted a demonstration of my capabilities, then that's exactly what he was going to get. With a renewed sense of purpose, I threw myself into work, determined to show my boss that I was more than capable of handling additional responsibilities. Marissa, bless her, was a constant source of support, checking in on me and offering a sympathetic ear whenever I needed it. One evening, as I was finishing up at the office, I decided to swing by our apartment and collect a few more of my belongings. I needed to feel in control of my own life, and that meant having access to my own things. As I unlocked the door and stepped inside, a sense of foreboding washed over me. Something felt off. I made my way to the bedroom, intent on packing a bag, when I noticed Declan's phone lying on the nightstand, the screen illuminated. Curiosity got the better of me, and I couldn't resist the urge to take a closer look. What I saw next made my blood run cold. Messages, dozens of them, exchanged between Declan and a woman I didn't recognize. 
the contents were unmistakable, declarations of love, plans for secret rendezvous, and a web of lies that shattered my heart. I stared at the screen, my hands trembling, as the full weight of Declan's betrayal sank in. He had been unfaithful, cheating on me with someone else while I poured my heart and soul into our marriage. The realization hit me like a physical blow, and I felt the air leave my lungs. Blindly, I stumbled out of the room, my vision blurred by tears. I had to get out of here, away from the evidence of Declan's deception. As I frantically gathered my things, the sound of the front door opening made me freeze. Avery? Declan's voice called out, laced with feigned concern. What are you doing here? I whirled around, my eyes burning with a mixture of hurt and rage. How dare you, I spat, the words burning my throat. How dare you betray me like this? Declan's expression shifted, a flicker of panic crossing his features, before he schooled his face into a mask of confusion. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't play dumb with me, Declan, I cried, the tears finally spilling down my cheeks. I saw the messages on your phone. How long has this been going on? He sighed, his shoulders slumping in defeat. Avery, I can explain. Explain? I interrupted, my voice trembling. There's nothing to explain. You've been cheating on me, lying to me, and making a fool of me in my own home. Declan opened his mouth to speak, but I held up a hand, cutting him off. Save it. I'm done. I'm done with your excuses, your neglect, and your betrayal. I turned to leave, my heart shattering with every step. But before I could reach the door, Declan's voice stopped me. Where are you going? He demanded, a hint of panic in his tone. I looked back at him, my gaze unwavering. I'm going to Marissa's, and then I'm going to figure out how to live without you, Declan. Because that's what you wanted, isn't it? Without waiting for a response, I walked out, the sound of the door slamming behind me echoing through the empty hallway. As I made my way to Marissa's, I knew that this was just the beginning of a long and painful journey, but I was determined to emerge from this stronger, more resilient, and forever free from Declan's shadow. The days following my discovery of Declan's betrayal were a whirlwind of emotions. One moment I would be consumed by rage, my hands itching to confront him directly. The next, I would be overcome with a sense of profound sadness, mourning the loss of the man I had once loved. Through it all, Marissa remained a steadfast pillar of support. She listened patiently as I poured out my heart, offering words of comfort and encouragement but she also made it clear that wallowing in self-pity was not an option. Avery, you can't just sit back and let him get away with this, she said, her brow furrowed with determination. You need to take action, and you need to do it strategically. I knew she was right. As much as I wanted to march back to our apartment and give Declan a piece of my mind, I realized that would only play into his hands. I needed to be smart to gather evidence and build a case that would ensure I emerge from this mess in the strongest possible position. That's when Marissa suggested I hire a private investigator. Chloe is the best in the business, she said, her eyes gleaming with a spark of mischief. She'll dig up every last dirty secret Declan's been hiding, and then some. It didn't take much convincing. The next day, I found myself sitting across from Chloe, a no-nonsense woman in her mid-thirties with a keen intelligence that immediately put me at ease. "'So, Avery, tell me what you know,' she said, her fingers poised over her keyboard, ready to take notes. I recounted the confrontation with Declan, the discovery of his affair, and my growing suspicion that there were more skeletons in his closet. Chloe listened intently, her expression unreadable. "'Okay, here's the plan.' she said, once I had finished. I'll need full access to Declan's financial records, his phone, and any other digital devices he uses. I'll also need to start surveillance just to see what other information I can uncover. I nodded, my heart pounding with a mixture of trepidation and anticipation. Whatever it takes, Chloe, I want to know everything. Over the next few weeks, Chloe worked tirelessly, leaving no stone unturned. She combed through Declan's bank statements, credit card bills, and even his internet browsing history, piecing together a damning portrait of his financial misdeeds. It's worse than I thought, she said, her brow furrowed as she presented her findings. Declan's been embezzling funds from his company, siphoning money into secret offshore accounts, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I felt my blood run cold. 
Declan's betrayal had cut deeper than I could have imagined, and the implications were staggering. What else did you find? I asked, stealing myself for more revelations. Chloe's expression darkened. He's been funneling money into secret accounts to support his mistress, and based on the surveillance footage, it seems the affair has been going on for at least a year. The words hit me like a physical blow, and I felt the air leave my lungs. A year. Declan had been betraying me, deceiving me, for an entire year. The pain and the anger threatened to consume me, but I refused to let it break me. All right, Chloe, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil raging within. I want you to put together a comprehensive report. I'm going to need every last piece of evidence if I'm going to take Declan down. Chloe nodded, a glint of admiration in her eyes. You got it, Avery. This is going to be one hell of a divorce settlement. As I left Chloe's office, I couldn't help but feel a sense of grim determination. Dicklin had pushed me to this point, forcing me to uncover his darkest secrets. And now I was going to use them to my advantage, ensuring that he paid dearly for his betrayal. With the incriminating evidence gathered by Chloe, I knew it was time to take the next step. Dicklin's betrayal had shattered any semblance of trust in our marriage, and I was determined to ensure that I emerged from this ordeal with the upper hand. That's why I found myself seated in the plush office of Ethan, a seasoned divorce attorney recommended by Marissa. As I laid out the details of Declan's infidelity and financial misdeeds, I watched his expression grow increasingly grave. This is quite serious, Avery, he said, his brow furrowed with concern. Declan's actions have put him in a very precarious legal position. I nodded, my hands clasped tightly in my lap. I want to make sure I get everything I'm entitled to. I won't let him manipulate the situation to his advantage. Ethan leaned back in his chair, his fingers steepled thoughtfully. Well, based on the evidence you've provided, we have a strong case. Declan's affair and financial misconduct will work in your favor when it comes to the division of assets and spousal support. I felt a surge of relief, but Ethan's next words gave me pause. However, Declan is not going to make this easy for you. He's going to do everything in his power to minimize the damage and protect his interests. I straightened in my seat, my gaze unwavering. I'm prepared to fight, Ethan. I won't back down, not after everything he's done. Ethan nodded, a hint of admiration in his eyes. Good. You'll need that determination, Avery. Declan is a shrewd and ruthless man, and he's not going to go down without a fight. The meeting with Ethan felt like a turning point, a moment when the reality of my situation truly sank in. I was about to embark on a legal battle, and one that would test the very limits of my strength and resilience. As I left Ethan's office, my mind was buzzing with strategies and contingency plans. I knew that Declan would do everything in his power to undermine me, to paint me as the unreasonable one, but I was determined to stay one step ahead of him, to ensure that the scales of justice tipped firmly in my favor. The opportunity to put my plan into action came sooner than I expected. Just a few days later, Declan showed up at my doorstep, his expression a mix of desperation and anger. "'Avery, we need to talk,' he said, his voice tense. I folded my arms across my chest, my gaze unwavering. "'What is it, Declan? I've been served with divorce papers,' he hissed, his eyes narrowing. "'What the hell is the meaning of this?' I raised an eyebrow, my lips curving into a humorless smile. "'I think the meaning is quite clear, Declan. I'm filing for divorce, and I'm going to make sure you regret the day you ever betrayed me.' Declan's face contorted with rage, and for a moment I thought he might lash out. But then, something shifted in his expression, and a calculating glint appeared in his eyes. "'Avery, let's talk about this,' he said, his tone suddenly conciliatory. "'I'm sure we can work something out, you and I. After all, we've been together for so long, and I still care about you.' I scoffed, the disgust evident in my voice. "'Save it, Declan. I have the evidence to bury you, and I'm not going to let you sweet-talk your way out of this. You're going to give me what I'm entitled to, and you're going to do it without a fight.' Declan's eyes narrowed, and I could see the wheels turning in his mind. He knew he was cornered, and the realization was clearly weighing on him. Fine, he spat, his jaw clenched tight. But this isn't over, Avery. I'll make sure you regret the day you ever crossed me. With that, he turned on his heel and stalked away, leaving me standing in the doorway, a sense of grim satisfaction coursing through me. 
I may have been the one serving the divorce papers, but I was the one in control. Declan had underestimated me, and now he was going to pay the price. The confrontation with Declan had left me feeling both empowered and unsettled. I knew that I had the upper hand, armed with the evidence Chloe had gathered, but I also couldn't shake the lingering unease that Declan's parting words had instilled in me. I'll make sure you regret the day you ever crossed me, he had snarled, his eyes burning with a malicious intensity that sent a shiver down my spine. Declan was not a man who took defeat lightly, and I had a sinking feeling that he would stop at nothing to protect his own interests, even if it meant resorting to underhanded tactics. With that in mind, I steeled myself for the next crucial step, the meeting with Ethan, to discuss the divorce proceedings. I knew that Declan would try to negotiate, to find a way to minimize the damage to his reputation and his finances, but I was determined to stand firm. As I stepped into Ethan's office, I could feel the weight of the situation bearing down on me. Declan was already there, his posture tense and his expression guarded. Avery, he said, his voice laced with a false veneer of civility. Thank you for coming. I nodded tersely, taking a seat beside Ethan, who was regarding Declan with a calculating gaze. All right, let's get started, Ethan said, his tone brisk and businesslike. Declan, as you know, Avery has compiled a significant amount of evidence against you, evidence of your infidelity, as well as your financial misconduct. Declan's jaw twitched, but he remained silent, his eyes fixed on Ethan. Given the severity of these offenses, Avery is entitled to a substantial portion of your assets, as well as ongoing spousal support, Ethan continued, his voice unwavering. Declan's expression darkened, and he leaned forward in his chair. Now, hold on a minute, he interjected, his voice laced with desperation. Surely we can come to some kind of reasonable agreement here. Avery and I have been together for a long time, and I'm willing to make concessions to ensure a smooth transition. I felt a surge of disgust at his words, and I could barely contain the rage that was bubbling beneath the surface. Concessions? I scoffed, my voice dripping with contempt. You've got some nerve, Declan. After everything you've done, you think you can just swoop in and try to negotiate your way out of this? Declan's eyes narrowed, and he fixed me with a cold, calculating stare. Avery, let's be reasonable here. I'm willing to offer you a generous settlement— one that will ensure you're taken care of. Generous? I repeated, my voice rising. You think throwing money at me is going to make up for the way you've betrayed me? For the way you've lied and cheated and disrespected me in my own home? Ethan held up a hand, his expression calm and measured. Declan, I'm afraid Avery's demands are non-negotiable. The evidence against you is overwhelming, and if you continue to resist, we will be forced to take this to court— where the outcome will be far less favorable for you. Declan's face flushed with anger, and for a moment I thought he might lash out. But then something shifted in his expression, and a calculated smile spread across his lips. Very well, he said, his voice dripping with false magnanimity. If that's the way it has to be, then so be it. But Avery, I want you to know that this isn't over. You may think you've won, but I have a few tricks up my sleeve, and I won't rest until I've made you regret the day you ever crossed me. With that, he stood and swept out of the room, leaving me feeling both triumphant and deeply unsettled. Declan's parting words had renewed my sense of foreboding, and I couldn't help but wonder what he had in store for me. But as I turned to Ethan, I saw the glint of determination in his eyes, and I knew that I was in good hands. Whatever Declan had planned— I was ready to face it head-on, my resolve strengthened by the knowledge that I was fighting for my own freedom and independence. The days following the confrontation with Declan were filled with a tense, uneasy anticipation. I couldn't shake the feeling that he was planning something, that he was biding his time, waiting for the right moment to strike. Marissa, ever the voice of reason, tried to reassure me. Avery, you've got Ethan on your side. Declan's not going to be able to pull any fast ones on you. I wanted to believe her, but the memory of Declan's parting words, you may think you've won, but I have a few tricks up my sleeve, haunted me. I couldn't help but wonder what he was capable of, and how far he would go to protect his own interests. 
as the divorce proceedings continued, I found myself increasingly on edge, jumping at every unexpected phone call or knock at the door. Ethan, sensing my growing anxiety, urged me to remain vigilant, but not to let Declan's threats sway me. He's lashing out because he knows he's cornered, Ethan said, his brow furrowed with concern. But if we stay the course and keep the pressure on, we'll emerge from this with the upper hand. I nodded, my resolve hardening. I had come too far to let Declan intimidate me now. I was going to see this through to the bitter end, no matter what he threw my way. Little did I know the bombshell was about to drop. It happened one afternoon, as I was leaving the office. Marissa caught up to me, her face flushed with a mixture of excitement and alarm. Avery, you need to see this, she said, her voice trembling. I followed her back to her desk, where she pulled up a local news article on her computer. The headline was jarring. Prominent business executive accused of embezzlement and extramarital affair. My heart pounded as I read through the article, my eyes widening in shock. Declan's name was splashed across the page, the details of his financial misdeeds and infidelity laid bare for the entire community to see. How did this happen? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Marissa's expression was grim. Ethan must have leaked the information to the media. He said it was the best way to put pressure on Declan and ensure a favorable settlement. I felt a surge of mixed emotions, triumph, anger, and a twinge of unease. On one hand, I was elated that Declan's dirty secrets were finally being exposed, that he was being held accountable for his actions. But on the other hand, the thought of my private life being dragged through the mud filled me with a sense of dread. This is going to be a PR nightmare for him, Marissa said her eyes gleaming with a hint of schadenfreude. His company is going to be in shambles, and his reputation is going to be ruined. I couldn't help but feel a sense of vindication. Declan had underestimated me, and now he was paying the price. But as I thought about the potential fallout, a nagging sense of guilt crept in. Marissa, what if this goes too far? I asked, my brow furrowed with concern. I never wanted to humiliate Declan. I just wanted to get what was rightfully mine. Marissa placed a comforting hand on my arm. Avery, you're not the one who did this. Declan brought this on himself. He's the one who betrayed you, who tried to manipulate the situation. Now he's facing the consequences of his actions. I nodded, but the unease lingered. As much as I wanted to see Declan pay for his misdeeds, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was more than just about our divorce. This was about revenge, pure and simple. As the news of Declan's scandal spread like wildfire through the community, I found myself the subject of both sympathy and curiosity. Strangers would approach me on the street, offering words of consolation and admiration for my resilience. Meanwhile, Declan's once revered reputation was in tatters, his name synonymous with greed and deception. I couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction, but it was tinged with a lingering discomfort. Had I gone too far in my quest for justice? Was this truly the path to true healing and empowerment? As the divorce proceedings continued, I found myself grappling with these questions, uncertain of the consequences of my actions. But one thing was clear. Declan had been brought low, and the ball was firmly in my court. As the divorce proceedings entered their final stage, the tension in the courtroom was palpable. Declan, once a pillar of the community, now sat hunched in his seat, his once confident demeanor shattered by the public exposure of his misdeeds. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for the confrontation that was about to unfold. Beside me, Ethan exuded an aura of calm professionalism, his keen eyes scanning the room as the judge took his seat. We are here today to finalize the divorce settlement between Avery and Declan, the judge began, his voice stern. Given the evidence presented, it is clear that there has been a significant breach of trust and financial misconduct on the part of the defendant, Declan. Declan shifted uncomfortably in his seat, his gaze fixed on the table in front of him. I couldn't help but feel a twinge of pity, despite the rage that still simmered within me. Avery, your lawyer has presented a detailed accounting of the marital assets, as well as a compelling case for the division of those assets, the judge continued. Given the circumstances, I am inclined to rule in your favor. I felt a surge of relief, but Declan's sudden outburst cut through the air like a knife. This is an outrage, he shouted, his face contorted with fury. 
I won't accept this. Avery is trying to ruin me, to take everything I've worked for. The judge fixed Declan with a stern glare. Mr. Declan, I would advise you to calm down and allow the proceedings to continue. Your actions have put you in this position, and I see no reason to deviate from the proposed settlement. Declan opened his mouth to protest, but Ethan spoke up, his voice measured and authoritative. Your Honor, if I may, he said, stepping forward. The evidence clearly shows that Mr. Declan has engaged in a pattern of financial misconduct and infidelity, which has had a devastating impact on my client, both emotionally and financially. She is entitled to a fair and equitable settlement, and the proposal we have presented is more than reasonable given the circumstances. The judge nodded, his expression unreadable. I am inclined to agree with your assessment, Mr. Ethan. However, I will give Mr. Declan one final opportunity to present his case before making a ruling. Declan's eyes narrowed and he leaned forward, his voice dripping with venom. This is a travesty of justice, he spat. Avery has manipulated the system, using her connections and her money to ruin me. I won't stand for it. I felt a surge of anger, and before I could stop myself, I was on my feet, my own voice raised in defiance. Manipulate the system, I cried, my hands trembling. You're the one who betrayed our marriage, Declan. You're the one who lied and cheated and stole from your own company. Don't you dare try to turn this around on me. The courtroom erupted in murmurs, and the judge raised a hand, silencing the crowd. Order, order, he said, his gaze fixed on Declan. Mr. Declan, I have heard enough. Your attempts to discredit your wife's case have been futile, and your own actions have brought you to this point. I hereby rule in favor of Avery, granting her a significant portion of the marital assets, as well as ongoing spousal support. Declan's face turned a deep shade of red, and for a moment I thought he might lunge across the table. But Ethan's firm hand on my arm held me back, and Declan was quickly escorted from the courtroom, his protests echoing through the halls. As the judge's ruling was read aloud, I felt a sense of vindication wash over me. Declan had underestimated me, and now he was paying the price. I had emerged from this ordeal battered, but not broken, and I knew that my future was brighter than ever. With a renewed sense of purpose, I turned to Ethan, a grateful smile tugging at the corners of my lips. "'Thank you, Ethan,' I said, my voice thick with emotion. "'I couldn't have done this without you.' Ethan returned my smile, his eyes gleaming with a hint of pride. It was my pleasure, Avery. You've shown incredible strength and resilience throughout this entire process. Now it's time to start a new chapter. I nodded, my gaze fixed on the door through which Declan had disappeared. A sense of closure washed over me, and I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. It was time to move on, to embrace the future and all the possibilities it held. As I stepped out of the courthouse, a sense of profound relief washed over me. The divorce proceedings had been a grueling ordeal, but I had emerged victorious, my head held high and my future secure. Declan's attempts to intimidate and manipulate had all been for naught, and I couldn't help but feel a surge of pride at having stood my ground. Still, the emotional toll of the past few months weighed heavily on me. I had poured my heart and soul into a marriage that had crumbled beneath the weight of Declan's betrayal, and the scars would take time to heal. Marissa was there waiting for me, her eyes shining with a mixture of pride and concern. "'Avery, you did it!' she exclaimed, pulling me into a warm embrace. "'I'm so proud of you.' I nodded, my lips curving into a weary smile. "'It's finally over, Marissa. I can't believe it.' She pulled back, her brow furrowing. "'Are you okay? I know this has been a lot to deal with.' I took a deep breath, trying to quell the swirl of emotions within me. "'I'm—I'm I'm not sure.' Part of me feels relieved, but the other part is just exhausted. It's been such a roller coaster of a journey. Marissa squeezed my hand, her expression filled with empathy. I can only imagine, but you know what? This is the start of a new chapter for you, one where you get to call the shots and live life on your own terms. Her words struck a chord within me, and I felt a glimmer of hope ignite in my chest. She was right. The shackles of my marriage had been broken and I was finally free to pursue the life I had always longed for. You're right, I said, my voice steadier. No more Declan, no more lies, no more compromises. It's time for me to focus on myself and what I want out of life. Marissa beamed, her eyes sparkling with excitement. 
That's the Avery I know and love. So what's the plan? I pondered the question for a moment, a new sense of purpose taking root within me. Well, for starters, I'm going to start looking for a new job. Something that really excites me. Something that I can pour my passion into. Marissa nodded enthusiastically. I've got just the thing. There's an opening at that nonprofit you've been eyeing, the one that does all the work with underprivileged youth. I bet they'd be thrilled to have you on board. I felt a surge of anticipation at the prospect, my mind already racing with ideas and possibilities. That sounds perfect. And you know what else? I'm going to take a trip somewhere I've always wanted to go. I need to get away to clear my head and find myself again. Yes, Avery, Marissa exclaimed, her grin widening. That's exactly what you need. Just promise me you'll take lots of pictures and bring back some great stories, okay? I laughed, the first genuine, carefree laugh I'd felt in months. You got it. I'm going to do it all. The new job, the adventure, the whole nine yards. No more letting Declan dictate my life. As we made our way through the bustling city streets, I couldn't help but feel a sense of elation. The future was uncertain, but it was also brimming with promise. I had taken back control of my life, and the possibilities were endless. Declan's shadow no longer loomed over me, and for the first time in years I felt a surge of genuine optimism. This was my moment, my chance to reinvent myself and emerge from the ashes of my failed marriage stronger and more resilient than ever before. With a renewed sense of purpose, I turned to Marissa, a determined glint in my eyes. Let's do this, 